Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, hope everyone's having a solid week. Um, today we're going to be doing a little comparison here um, of a Curtis F3 medium flipper versus non-flipper. And uh, before I get started, huge shout out to uh, my buddy Devin. I will link his YouTube channel down below in the comments, but he let me borrow this uh, yeah, this joker looking flipper version of the F3. And um, to be honest with you, when I first thought about making this video, since I have the non-flipper version you see right here, I thought it was gonna be a straight comparison, you know, flipper versus non-flipper. But the fact that this one on top here, this one's from 2017 and mine is actually from 2022. So this year, and um, there were actually quite a few differences here and it, and it was kind of it was interesting for me to kind of peel back you know <laughs> the layers of this and, and see what the differences were like what is five years of evolution of the exact same knife look like so we're gonna get into that here um and final aside before i get started actually just hit 100 subscribers on my youtube channel and again like what started out as <laughs> just a place for me to to rant about things and knives um I, I really enjoy doing this i appreciate everyone who has subscribed um yeah i'm we're gonna keep going forward with stuff and with this comparison video i'm gonna get into like the similarities and then the differences that i saw and then kind of give my final thoughts on what i like better the non-flipper version or the flipper version um with that, um, get started right here. I'm gonna move mine out of the way. We'll use Devin's front and center here. So um, this F3 compared to a zero tolerance 0562, looks like that. Um, I also grabbed a Benchmade bug out. Um, so let's see, we'll line these up. Looks like that. And then honestly, the more I thought about what I would compare the F3 to, and, I, and I'm not doing it right now, but I think down down the line, I'd like to you know find out what it's most similar to, is definitely this McNeese 3.5. Um, I think like the PM and the Curtis F3, they're so close in price and look and feel that this is definitely a comparison that I'm gonna want to further explore in, in some subsequent videos. So stand by for that. All right, and as a quick reminder, just so if you're not familiar with the Curtis F3, didn't watch my review of this one. Um, so it features a three and a quarter inch blade, 7.25 inches overall, four and a half inches closed. Um, the MSRP on these, from, from what I can tell, and I looked at like DLT trading, they are out of stock, but they run about $650. Um, not sure what secondary market prices are right now, but um, you know, that's that's kind of the, the price point or what, what we're gonna base this off of. Um, with that, I'll get right into the similarities. Um, the first similarity that I noticed was, so both of these being the medium with a Spanto grind, if you hold these side by side, the grind is the same. The grind in five years has not changed much at all. That was the first similarity that I noticed. Um, the second being this pivot system, which again, you know, it looks a little daunting all told when you look at it, these eight circles and then this X in the middle. That, it hasn't changed over the years and the, the whole purpose of this oversized pivot is to prevent over travel on the lock bar. So I think that that's really cool, but again, it's not proprietary or anything like that. You can literally use a coin to, to adjust the pivot as necessary. Um, the next similarity was the pocket clip. And, um, you know, Curtis kind of their logo is this, uh, you know, reticle. Um, that hasn't changed at all either. So um, yeah, uh, last similarity that I noticed between these knives was just the intensity of the jimping. So, it, you know, they definitely, they kept the, I don't know what you call it, like jimping per inch, this kind of sawtooth design. That, that's gonna be the same over the course of the last five years. They haven't changed, you know, made it more coarse, more, you know, um, lighter, anything like that, more spread out. Th this jimping, whatever they had plugged into the machine, that's what they did for both of these. And honestly, that's going to end the similarities between these two. I have a whole host of differences that I've noticed and we'll jump right into it. Um, the first one, I'll post a picture right here, is gonna be the frame thickness. I noticed this almost immediately, just the, the older version is a lot heavier and when you look at it, this one is so much thicker all around as far as the frame goes. It's, it's actually pretty crazy, like they took off 
quite a few thousands, um, you know, in the last five years. And, and I thought that that was kind of interesting to see. Um, the next difference between, you know, the next five year difference here, five year challenge is going to be the blade thickness. And I'll post another picture. I tried to line them up. You're just going to kind of have to take my word for it. The blade thickness on the 2022 one is probably a thousandth or two thicker, actually. So, the, you know, you have a thicker frame on the old one, but the newer one has a thicker blade and a much thinner frame. I think that that's kind of interesting. I think they kind of tried to pare it down a little bit, realizing that this thing, when I picked it up too, and before I noticed the difference, I thought maybe in the back of my head, it's just, yeah, it seems stupid now, but I thought maybe it was like the addition of the flipper tab, maybe that weighed three pounds, no. Um, but, you know, th there is a big weight difference between them, and um, it's just interesting that, you know, the older one makes up for the weight with the frame, but the blade thickness is going to be a little bit thinner, actually. Um, the next difference that I noticed, and I'll post a picture right here, were the Torx screws that they use. So again, this is getting a little bit down to the finer details, but on the newer one, the 2022, and I'm going to try desperately not to smash these things together. Um, they're much more rounded now, the, the Torx bit head or the Torx head. The older ones were... Ah, they kind of stood up a little bit more. They, they weren't rounded at all. They were just kind of more blocky. But I mean, the cool thing about this one, and again, I'm, this knife is absolutely fabulous. It's wild, <laughs> wild looking. Um, they even anodized the screws. And I thought that that was like really kind of impressive. Like, I mean, they, they spent a lot of work. And you know, one of the things that Devin pointed out about this one, this anodization and like this scheme that's on here, this was all done in house. And that's really cool. Like it's not aftermarket or anything like that. Like this thing came looking like a Fruit Loops box. And that's, that's kind of cool. I, you don't see that too often. Like I, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. All right. Another difference that I noticed was, so, I mean, the F3 where it appears, like obviously this one's a little bit cut out so that you can actually actuate the knife. Cause if you didn't have these cutouts, you'd be dead in the water. The F3 logo is the same, but they've definitely changed the Curtis logo. So now it actually looks more old school and back in the day, 20 being 2017, um, you had like the reticle and it just says Curtis knives, but now it's just Curtis in this really nice script or whatever. So that was, uh, that's another interesting change that, you know, the, the whole, the whole logo has changed since 2017. The next difference that I noticed, and again, we have way more differences than similarities here it's going to be the lock bar and i will post a picture right here but as you can see on the older one there's actually a lock bar insert and then the newer one there is no lock bar insert so again there's not that other torque screw on the lock bar um, this one is just like a, a treated face uh, for lockup but even the lockup is very different in these two blades and Honestly, the older one is kind of what I'm what I'm used to a little bit. Um, the the feeling, the sound. This one sometimes can be a little bit spongy, and although you have that you know oversized pivot to prevent over travel, it it's definitely a lot more bendable. Or you know you feel like you can push this one a lot further than this one that just kind of you know stops. So another interesting difference there. Um, the next difference that I noticed was the jimping on the back. So like I said, one of the similarities is just the intensity of the jimp jimping. One of the differences, the jimping on the newer one sticks up much higher. Like one of my yeah, kind of feedback items for the newer one when I reviewed it was just this jimping is very intense and kind of like very abrasive sawtooth. They actually used to sink it in a lot further, so you didn't get as much bite on it, but the newer ones, they kind of bumped it up maybe a thousandth of an inch. Again, I don't know if you can see that, but the sawtooth jimping on the back of a newer one is, is much higher. Again, this is probably way more information than anyone ever needs, but the purpose being, if you're looking at getting into a Curtis F3, just be cognizant. I don't have the information for what year that, you know, these kind of, I think we're looking at two rather extreme examples. Um, but you know, whether you buy a 2022 one or a 2017, there, there are going to be differences. So just be cognizant of that. You know, it's, they're not the same for the last five years. There, there's been some pretty interesting changes. Um, and with that, um, so the next, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we, we got to cover this. So 
the flipper tab and I did I, I thought maybe I was like man this one's so old I bet they changed the flipper tab I did do a search of DLT trading looked at a few flippers closed whatever they have not changed this flipper tab since 2017 and that, and that was one of my feedback items with this I was like man I have plenty of flipper knives like I mean this thing's running on bearings it's kind of small this flipper tab is absolutely huge and, and I'm not saying that it gets like you know, it's not like I'm bonking it on everything. It's, you know, you can feel the flipper tab in your pocket or anything like that. But this thing is, it's dramatic overkill. Like this flipper tab is absolutely monstrous. I'm not, I don't know. That, that's one of my feedback items for this. Um, but, you know, just so you know, like this thing is, and I wrote down on my little notes page, you know, XXXXXXL. Like, I mean, even like a, a larger ZT has a smaller flipper tab. This is the largest flipper tab I've seen in, on any knife ever. And it's, you know, it's three and a quarter inch blade. So that's kind of interesting. All right, and that concludes my differences between a flipper version from 2017 and a non-flipper version from 2022. Um, I think it's kind of cool though. There's so many differences over the last five years. So it really speaks to kind of the evolution of this blade. Again, it's kind of unique that you have an F3 medium and Spanto, one flipper, one knot. Like there's been a lot of changes to this knife over the last five years. And, and I would have never known that there were any differences unless, you know, Devin had sent me this one. So that, that's really cool. Um, I do think like, as I said before, this flipper tab, it's very comfy, but super obtrusive for the size of the knife blade. I, I kind of hit that with the differences, but it, it doesn't necessarily get in the way, but it is, it's just overkill. So, I mean, it might be for some people, probably not so much for me, but I mean, all in all, like I think like comparing these two together, I really do love this skinny or new version of the F3 medium. Like, I don't think there's ever going to be a time where I'm like, man, like I, this thing's great, but I wish the frame was thicker. Like this one's just a little bit more sleek of a knife, but it is very cool to kind of see where they came from with that. Um, I did prior to doing this comparison, I, I wanted to get a flipper tab for this one. I would love to switch the blade out or would have loved to switch the blade out, but I think I'm happy with the action and where this thing's at without a flipper tab, because even if I had, you know, contacted Curtis said, Hey, I want to put a new Magna Cut blade on this thing, but I want it to be a flipper tab. I'm going to get this flipper tab on here. Like there's no, like they don't make it any smaller than that. And I much prefer having it clean. Um, I, I think like, yeah, now that I can weigh those two, and honestly, like this was a huge help to me so thank you Devin for sending me this like you know I, I think I'm happy with with where this one's at and um yeah that that concludes my comparison if you have any questions comments concerns please put them below but really appreciate everyone tuning in and we will see you next time